tuned for Air Gun Detectives. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC, and our rare and unusual series continues. And we got something that's unusual today, definitely. We're going to take the mystery out of the Gletcher Mosin Nagant M1891. Yeah, that is a mouthful. We'll just call it the M1891 from this point forward. But it is a CO2 powered BB gun. Anyway, before we get started here, do me a favor. If you hadn't already, hit that subscribe button down in the corner. It doesn't cost you anything. It's absolutely free, but it really helps support the channel. And we really want to keep doing what we're doing here. Also, if you have an opportunity, check out my website, www.airgundetectives.com. On that site, I've got some t-shirts, various colors and uh, styles. I've also got uh, my Generation 2 bipods. I got some hats on there, a few other things, and occasionally my personal inventory. So check that out. Anyway, back to the... M1891. This is a CO2 powered BB gun and it takes a 12 gram CO2. Uh, technically they call it a sawed off rifle but honestly as short as the barrel is on this I would label it more as a pistol. So anyway this is a bolt action pretty amazing. It's one of the smoothest bolt action rifles I'm telling you it is unbelievable. It's got a dropout magazine. Let's just pop this magazine out here for you. Okay. All right. As you can see, it holds your one, um, one single 12 gram CO2. This is spring loaded. You load it through the front here. But what is really cool, let's check this out. It has a CO2 wrench right here. So you're never going to be without your CO2 wrench, which is great. So, anyway, it's a 16 round magazine. It's got the uh, valve in it the whole bit so this just pops out load it up and it snaps right on in there okay the overall gun since it is cut down it's 22 and a half inches long it's not light this thing weighs six pounds but it feels so solid and remember i was talking about the short barrel this has a shroud on here the actual barrel is only about seven inches so you're looking at a seven inch smooth bore barrel um they're claiming this will get uh, about 420, 427 feet per second. You know we're going to test that, so we'll find out. It normally comes with open sights. I'll show you a picture of that. I altered that a little bit. I removed the open sights, and then I put a uh, 11 millimeter to uh, Picatinny rail on here, so I could put a uh, long eye relief pistol scope on here. That's good for the guys with the older eyes, so it really is. But it does come with open sights, as you can see. Anyway, I also put a Picatinny rail on the bottom of this, so you can add a bipod, which we'll use when we're doing some shooting here. But uh, it's really, it's really, really a neat gun. And uh, we'll get into it, we'll go through, we'll test it, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. But I want to show you guys the performance. And these are still available. They're out there, and they're right around 180 bucks. Let's go out and have some fun with this, and then we'll come back and chat. Let's test our M1891 for some velocity over the chronograph. It's a uh, average day, probably in the mid 60s here, not bad CO2 weather. I personally prefer it in the higher 70s, lower 80s for CO2 weather, but hey, let's see how well this performs. So I've got a fresh CO2. Let's just see what we can do with uh, five shot average. We're gonna shoot uh, 5.1 grain zinc BBs. So we're gonna do five shots of those, average it out. Okay, so shot number one. I love how smooth this bolt is. Shot number one. That's 500 feet per second. Gotta like that. Shot number two. 492. Shot number three. 496. Shot number four. 487. You can see the CO2 is cooling, so it's dropping a little bit. And last but not least, one more shot. So that's your average velocity. So let's uh, move on to the next segment. All right, let's test the Gletcher uh, M1891 for a little accuracy here. As you guys can tell, I've got the bipods on here. And I also have an optic setup. It's a scope optic. But I already talked to you guys a little bit about that, but just reminding you. Anyway, let's uh, let's just shoot uh, five shots. We'll see how well it groups. 
We're uh, once again going to shoot at our splatter burst targets. These are our 8 inch targets. We're going to aim dead center. Wherever it lands, it lands. But we're our usual 32 feet, roughly 10 meters. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, see how well we do here. Okay, five shots. Yeah. Oh, what a nice sight picture. Yeah, I got to get down kind of low with this one. All right. I like that. Oh, yeah. Surprising how accurate this thing is. And I play with this at long distances, too. See how far I can shoot an aluminum can? All right. And I think we got one more. Let's keep this up. Gotta love it. Yeah, this is a heck of an accurate BB gun. It really is. You see what you get there. All right, let's move on to the next segment. So you guys know, I absolutely love the trigger on this rifle. If that's what you want to call it. Sawed off rifle. Anyway, the trigger on this uh, 1891 is pretty awesome. And hopefully, I'm going to demonstrate that right now. So we got our trusty Lyman trigger gauge. You reset that. Okay. And let me show you. Hold on. All right. Two pounds, 13 ounces. Two pounds, 13 ounces. But it is so smooth. I'm telling you, it is really a fun trigger. It's really fun to shoot. But anyway, there you go. Two pounds, 13 ounces. Let's uh, move on to the next segment. All right, let's do a little plinking with our M1891. Now, I actually pushed this thing back. We're at our break barrel distance. We're at 20 yards, which is beyond the capacity for this, but sometimes I have fun with this. I see how far away I can get to actually hit an object like aluminum can or something. And you start up close and you work your way back. It's kind of a fun little contest. But anyway, I decided let's just do 20 yards and just see how we do. I did put a variety of little objects up there. Check out our distance real quick. This is our break barrel distance. So yeah, now as you can see, there's a few cans there. I did throw a little pipe and a small shotgun shell just, just to see if we can hit it, just to challenge us. So. We're going to do one of two things. We're either going to run out of ammo or we're going to knock all the targets down. So one of two things are going to happen here. I'm just going to use the regular zinc BBs. I like those a lot. And let's, like I said, let's just shoot till we're out of BBs or we knock our targets down. All right. And let's start with the bottom row. I believe I punched a hole in that can and just didn't knock it over. So we'll come back to that one. I'm going to do the next one over. Okay, that one fell over. And how about that little white? Little white. Nope, that was truly a miss. I could see the BB curving on that one. All right, let's try it again. Nope. All right. One more and then I'm moving on. There we go. All right. Let's, uh, I'm going to come back down to that little pipe. I want to see if we can hit that shotgun shell on the top. It's such a challenge. Nope. I saw that BB. It went to the right of the shotgun shell. Okay. And that's what you can never tell with these BBs. They'll just... That one to the left. <laughs> so it split the difference. Let's see if we can get this one to go in the middle. Nope, that one to the right. All right, I'm going to go for a bigger target. That one to the right. So like I said, I'm pushing the distance on this. I really am. But that's part of being a challenge, so let's see. Got that one. And how about the one next to it? Got that one too. Okay, so we're back. Since we still got rounds left, we're back to the shotgun shell on top. 
Oh, that barely went to the left of it. Come on, we're going on each side of this thing. There we go. I guess we still got a couple rounds left, so let's just keep going. If we hit that little pipe. Got the little pipe. And then let's see if we can knock that can actually off the shelf. Nope. It's just punching holes in it though. Let's uh, let's try to aim a little high on it and see if we can knock it over. Here we go. I always like to clear the shelves. I can never really stop shooting until I clear the shelves. When I'm off camera, I have to reload to make sure I don't leave anything up on the shelves. That's kind of rule of the house. Anyway, a lot of fun. Bletcher is definitely a lot of fun. Let's uh, move on to the next segment and wrap this up. Let's wrap this up with our conclusion. Man, I'll tell you, this M1891, whoa. Fun to shoot, fun to play with. It's just literally awesome. It really is. I do have a negative, though. I just thought I'd throw this out there. Remember I was telling you how short the barrel is? It's a 7-inch barrel. They easily, easily could have put a 12-inch barrel in this, without a doubt. They could have put a 12-inch barrel in this and would gave us another 100 feet per second, without a doubt. So most of this is just all shrouded up. So that would be my negative. If you're going to build this, put the maximum length barrel you can put in these things, and then you get the maximum velocity out of them. Just kind of common sense. Anyway, but let's talk about the positives. The positives. The build quality on this, the finish on it, literally amazing. It's incredible. This bolt action assembly, the, how smooth it is, and the finish on it, absolutely outstanding. I just, I just can't believe how smooth of action it is. It really is. As far as velocity goes, you saw what we averaged, and it was not overly a warm day. It was an average day, but we were shooting on average just under 500 feet per second. Imagine if you added that extra uh, length of barrel when they built it, we'd have been getting 600 feet per second. This is technically a pistol. And at our 10 meters, it was fantastic accuracy. I mean, we got well under a half inch group. Now you saw when we were plinking, I stretched it out to 20 yards. And I did that on purpose just to kind of show you guys the max velocity. But hey, you know, over 50% of the time we were hitting the small targets. But that just happens when you back way up with a BB gun. And like I said, I've had contests with this before. It's a lot of fun, is we'll start up close with a can. And as long as you continue to hit the can down, then you move back and move back and move back. But we've, got, we've gotten, honest to God, out to, oh, 25, 30, 35 yards where you're actually watching the BB arc just to hit the can. But a lot of fun. Anyway, so accuracy, fantastic. Velocity, fantastic. The trigger. The trigger is terrific on this. And this is all metal. There's really, um, with other than the synthetic stock, but this synthetic stock is solid. I mean, it really looks like wood, but it's heavy duty. So it's really a nice synthetic stock. And other than that, everything else is pretty much metal on this. It really is. You're not going to find any plastic on it. And that's probably where you're getting the six pounds of weight. So again, I love the trigger. And I love that it's frugal on this CO2. You can get about 80 shots out of one 12 gram CO2. So that's really good. So this uh, definitely is unusual. There's no question about that. And the performance was excellent. So I would have to rate this one five stars without the doubt. This is a five star gun, and I would highly recommend adding this to your air gun collection. I mean, it's just looking at it, it's, it's a piece of artwork, plus it's a talking point, the fact that it's sawed off. And, uh, you know, it's easy to store. It is heavy, though, it, it, but heavy in a really good way. It's very solid. So what I did, too, on this, just to, just to highlight, I removed the rear sight which was right obviously up here. And then I replaced it with an 11 millimeter to a Picatinny rail conversion here. And uh, I'll leave a link for you guys. And then I just put this long eye relief scope. It's a cheap scope, nothing to write home about, believe me, I'll leave you a link for it. But the thing about using a pistol scope, you have the long eye relief, so it works well on something like this where you're mounting this more forward. Now you could use a red dot on this too, which would be pretty good. So you could set a red dot up. I also added a little Picatinny rail on the bottom of this, and that was very simple. And uh, that's why I threw a bipod on there and I was shooting with a bipod, so. So you can accessorize it, it's pretty cool. And the, the front sight comes off too, if you wanna pop the pin out and pull it off. I just like the looks of it, so I left it on there. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode 
of air gun detectives. I know it was a lot of fun shooting this gun. It really was. It always is. Don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun and our rare and or unusual series continues. So check that out every month. So until next time, I hope you're getting lots of shooting in. I hope your families are all doing well. So take care and God bless.